G'day everybody, it's Ben from Promethean. Hope you're really well. Making a video here on interactive tools you can use in the classroom that don't require an Android operating system and that aren't apps. Apps are cool, apps are great, but sometimes there's a lot you can get done with just the plain old internet. This can be important if you're rocking a active panel or an active board that is a little bit older but still soldiering on and all you've got at your disposal is a nice panel and your laptop here's some here's a couple of ways just to get you thinking about using that laptop and the touch capabilities of your panel to get interactive with your students the first one here is aww app the website there is awwapp.com and I'm gonna hat tip this one to Chelsea Pitcher from Promethean. She brings this one up quite a bit and it's a ripper. It's what it looks like. It's a giant whiteboard that you can scroll around and you can write with and you know, let's, let's write some things. The story Yeah, so I mean, you can write on it. You'll have to excuse my handwriting. Uh, I am a photographer by trade, so that should explain that for you. But, you know, you've got your full set of pen tools, erasing tools. You can put some shapes down. You can drop some text if you would like. Let me grab that select tool and select that. And then you can move some things around. It's a pretty, it's a pretty awesome whiteboarding here you've got some options to collaborate up high here uh, you can export boards um, you got zoom controls and hand and panning controls over here it's a really really cool thing if you love it of course you can sign up and log in you can go premium which will lose the ads but as for, for a simple tool to get some notes up on a board and to get to work it's pretty impressive all right moving on to the next one we're going to have a look at auto draw and this is www.autodraw.com and what i love about auto draw is that yes it's a very basic whiteboarding app but this little magic pen here actually helps you draw and let me just delete those changes there and i'll show you so we've got the magic draw chosen and I'm going to attempt to draw something and let's just see what happens. So, uh-huh, uh-huh, so far so good. Have you guessed what I'm drawing yet? Uh-huh, all right. That's right. That is a terrible, terrible drawing of what I'm hoping to draw, which is a car. Now, if you have a look up the top here, and I'll just draw a line under them, you see that all of these suggestions are popping up. Basically asking, did you mean to draw a car? Why, yes, I did. Thank you, Auto Draw. So once you start drawing, it's gonna guess what you're drawing. You can grab the move tool and you can whack it on the page and you can start to draw yourself out a little picture so i might draw a car and then i'll get back on the magic pen and i'll start drawing a building um, and look at that i've just drawn those three lines and straight away it's already suggested a couple of good building options i think i'll go that one i'll resize that down just a little bit look at me go and then what I'll do is, this is the magic draw button. This button down here is just like a, a regular old pen, pencil. And you can adjust the thickness at the top here as I'm doing that. Let's go there. And I'll just draw in a bit of ground there too. Uh, you've got a text tool, which you can, you know, choose a couple of fonts and some sizes and do some typing. You've also got a fill tool. You've got some shapes. You've got different colors to choose from there as you can see i like the blue a zoom in a zoom out a back button and this little button down the corner here if you see that if you click on that you can drag it out and you can extend your canvas a bit too which can be quite nice if you want to keep your drawing going if you head up to this menu up here the three 
three dashes in the top left hand corner. You've got options to download your file which drops it straight down into my downloads folder as a PNG which is a pretty handy format and you can get to work that way. So that's auto draw. I think it's a really really fun one. I'm going to start over. I mean and it's pretty pretty good so I'll try and draw a cat. Is that gonna, ooh, hat, not bad, not bad. Oh gosh, I'm a bad drawer. Is it, it's thinking I'm drawing a dragon. What's that one? A t oh, a lion, that's not bad actually. I'll give you that auto draw because my drawing wasn't very good. And I wonder if I could come in and I'll try and draw that body in there with a tail. Anyway, lots of fun to be had with auto draw. As you can see, it, um, it really helps me out in, you know, life. Okay, so there's a couple of really good drawing and whiteboarding apps for you that'll work generically across myriad subjects. This one's really specific, uh, it speaks to my background. I was a photography teacher, still am, really. And this is a great tool. It's a simulator which runs the scenario of a helicopter being photographed through a camera and this is the resulting picture. Now the variables with photography are obviously the light you've got to deal with on the day, the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO, the sensor, which you can control as a photographer. And via, you know, you can set this scenario as a teacher. So we could say it's a it's quite a, a dark evening. At this F number, with this shutter speed, at this ISO, when you take a photo, you're going to get a photo here that is five stops underexposed. What can we do about that? And, you know, your students can have a discussion and we can sort of say, well, what if we raise the ISO by that? Oh, that's not bad. We could open up the aperture of the lens and you see how it's visually changing that on the camera too. And then if we take a photo, we can see, oh, we're only one stop underexposed. That's, that's quite good. And because there's no sort of perfect scenario, it's always going to be a combination of aperture shutter speeds and sensor. If it's a really bright day, if it's a really dark day, it really helps students make these decisions. And what I love about this is that it's just a web browser but because of the dials and the knobs and the sliders, students can come up and move them around. It's very fun and interactive. Moving on to the next suggestion. This is a website I, I don't necessarily mind. I don't use it a lot of the time, but it's worth poking around in because um, there's some gold in here. And it's, it's education.abc.net.au, so it's Australian. Um, there's lots of, as you can see, resources, games, topics, and things like that. I like to get into the games, and you can search by, say, if you want to do English all years, you start to see that, oh my gosh, look at all these games you could be playing. And I won't go into them now because it'll take a second to load, but you can, you can, some of them are really basic kind of drag and drop decision making things which works great in a uh, touch panel, um, and others are a little bit more involved. Okay, now this last one is, is very, you know, take it with a grain of salt, it might be great, it might not be great, but it's archive.org, which is basically the internet archive. So everything, anything that was once electronic um, lives, is, well, the aim of the archive is to have, that, have anything that once was electronic to live here. So you can find a lot of great games on here to play and some will work well with the touch panel depending on when the game was made. For example, what I've got up here is the game that perplexed me all through primary school and haunted me for the rest of my life, which is Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? And this game, how what year was it developed? 1990, so it's coming up to being 30 years old and it's a ripper game. Now this game, obviously, when you played it on your computer in year two in Mr. Prowl's classroom, needed a keyboard and a mouse. So I loaded this website onto the panel and I connected a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse 
and it played brilliantly. It was really quite good. Keep in mind that's nearly 30 years old and it's running off the internet and, you know, so sometimes the sound might play up a little bit. Instead of clicking once, you have to click a button twice. But overall, like just in terms of just nostalgia and retro and showing students how far we've come in terms of gaming and, you know, programming and all that kind of stuff, it was really, really cool. You don't have to go back as far as I have. You can find more modern games that have been added to the archive. So it's a really cool place to poke around. And again, all you need is internet and a browser.